In this video, I will demonstrate how to organize, code, and enter data for non-parametric data analysis into SPSS. Now, typically when we're dealing with data for non-parametric analysis, it may be coming from a survey of some kind, or it's data that's being collected to represent categories or ranks. And so as we begin to organize the data we've collected and begin to code it so that we can enter it into SPSS, SPSS, S, we need to, first of all, determine the data type. And so is it nominal or ordinal or interval ratio data? And if you're conducting a survey, it may be a combination of all three types. But once we've determined the data type, that's going to have an impact on how we organize and then how we code the data to enter it into the program. So for example, with nominal or ordinal scale data, if we're determining uh, or if we're using that type of data, we first need to determine the levels or categories within that, that particular variable or within that particular item that we're collecting data on. So examples of this might be uh, sex or gender. So that's a nominal scale data uh, variable. It has categories. And in this case, it has two categories, male or female. Uh, if we might be determining someone's level of agreement on a particular statement. Uh, they might be able to agree or feel neutral or disagree. So we'd have three levels within that particular variable and that again could be considered categor categorical or ordinal. And then we might have a situation where we have a diagnosis of depression for example. So the subject either has depression or does not have depression. So this would be an example of categorical or uh, nominal scale variables. Now sometimes we might have ordinal scale variables that are true ranks. In other words, ranked first, second, third, fourth, or fifth. That would be entered in and encoded um, as a number. So the place you finish in a race is a numeric rank. Now interval and ratio scale data, that obviously is numeric to begin with, so that's, that does not need to be changed. But we enter that data in as we would with a normal numeric variable. Now, I'll we'll talk a little bit later about how we can convert interval or ratio scale data um, to be used in non-parametric testing. Now, the next thing we need to do is once we've determined the levels and categories of our variables, we need to then determine a code for each level. And then this code is what's going to be entered into SPSS, S. And so, for example, for sex, again, we talked about having two levels or two categories. So you can use whatever numbers you prefer to code them, but in the example of sex, we would assign male a code of one and female a code of two. In the example of diagnosis of depression, we could assign the fact that they do not have depression a code of zero, and having depression, a diagnosis of depression, could be given a code of one. And again, the numbers really don't matter because they don't have any value. We're just using them as a code. So in the case of gender, having a one or two does not necessarily have an inherent numeric value. One isn't necessarily better than the other. We're just using them as codes to differentiate the two categories. Now once you've determined uh, your organization and your coding for each of your variables, um, what you then need to do is collect your data and then determine the number of individuals or number of subjects that fit into each category within each variable. So for example, the first question might we might indicate or have them indicate what gender. So they're either going to choose male or female. So in this case we had 10 respondents and 4 males and 5 females indicated their gender. The next question might be how satisfied are you with your instructor? And so if we had 10 respondents, three might say they're satisfied, five might say they're neutral, and two might say they're unsatisfied. And we continue to do that for each question or variable that we are collecting um, in the case of this type of data. And then what we need to do is, is match the codes we've determined. So again, we talked about male being a code of one and female being a code of two. We match the codes to the number of responses that we actually have collected. And then we will enter that into SPSS. SPSS. So in the case of gender, we would have we have four male respondents. So under the column indicating gender or variable indicating gender, we'd have four number ones. We had five females indicate uh, identify with that particular gender. So we'd have five number twos in the same column. 
and then we would do the same thing with the satisfaction. If we're using the code of one for being satisfied, two for being neutral, and three for being unsatisfied, there'd be three number ones, five number twos, and two number threes. So let me go ahead and exit out of this and I'll demonstrate this actually in the SPSS window. So what I have here is a blank data file. And so what we need to remember is that each column or each variable represents a, a question or, or a, a possible response. So we might have gender, we might have satisfaction, we might have the state you live in and so on. And then each row is representing an individual person's response. So first thing we need to do is set up our variables. And so we're going to stick with the two questions I used in my example. So the first variable would be uh, sex, and we would name it that way, and we could give it a more detailed um, description under the label. Okay, and the next thing we need to do is then assign the code for uh, these particular, this particular variable. So we go to the values column and we click on this little blue box with three dots in it. And then we can assign the numeric code for each of our categories or each of our levels. So in this case, we're going to assign a one to male. So we indicate or include a one in the value box and then we label it as male and click add. And then a two is going to indicate our female category. And then we click add and then we click OK. So what we'll see here on the values box is the code assigned with each uh, word label. So a 1 is equated to a male, a 2 is equivalent to a female. Now we can do the same thing with our satisfaction question and again we can call this uh, pretty much whatever we want but we're going to call it satisfaction. We can again give it a more detailed label so satisfaction with instructor And again, we need to identify or give, attach the codes to each of our different possible responses. So in this case, we're going to give a level or a code of one to a level of agreement, or I'm sorry, satisfied. Okay, a two is neutral. And a three would be unsatisfied. Let me click OK. So now if we go back to our data view, we can see we have our two variables uh, labeled and we already have preset what the codes are going to be equivalent to. So in our example we had, I believe we had four males so on the question of the, the gender. So we would have four number ones. And we had six females, so we'd have six number twos. Okay, and then with the satisfaction, what we'd have to then do is match the response of satisfaction for each individual. So let's say, uh, I think we mentioned before we had uh, three satisfieds. So we have one, two, three ones, and we have five neutrals. And we had two unsatisfieds. And so now again, each numeric code is representing that, that word-based response or category. Now if you'd rather see the words associated with each of these codes, if you go up to the top here and we, we see a, what look like two little scrabble tiles, an A and a 1 with an arrow connecting them. This will allow us to switch back and forth between the word-based labels and the numeric-based labels. So if I click on that, it'll automatically switch it to male, female, or satisfied, neutral, or unsatisfied. And I can switch back and forth between the two. Okay, so that's an indication of how we can take that categorical kind of data, code it, and then enter it into SPSS so SPSSS so we can so we can then analyze it. So another thing we can look at is how we can look, use numeric data um, in non-parametric analyses. So let's say we have an additional variable which indicates um, someone's GPA or someone's grade in a particular course that's associated with this. 
Now this is numeric, um, and so we don't need to attach a value label to it. So let's just say that these were the particular um, grades for each of the individuals. I'm just going to just kind of enter data in here arbitrarily. Now, if we wanted to, to look at this data as a ranked type data, in other words, we wanted to analyze um, perhaps the GPA relative to rank between the two genders, we don't have to convert this to a rank. Uh, if we're going to do a Mann-Whitney U test, for example, which is used for ordinal scale data, SPSS will automatically convert this numeric data into ranks as part of the analysis. So we don't need to change this into a ranking. Um, it, it'll do that automatically. Now, as I mentioned before, we might have um, a, a true rank, in other words, place you finished um, in a race, for example, then that's obviously a numeric rank that we'd enter in as, as a numeric, numeric variable. Now, we may also have a situation in which we have a numeric variable like GPA that we want to convert into a categorical variable, such as pass or fail the class. So I'll demonstrate next how we can convert that numeric data into categorical data that can then be used in non-parametric tests. So what we want to do is go to the transform menu and we want to recode into a different variable. Okay, so we want to take GPA and create a new variable that indicates pass or fail. And so first we have to have our input variable and that's GPA. So we move that into the input variable box. And then we need to create this new output variable that we want. So we're going to call it pass fail. Okay, and we're going to attach a code to that um, in, in just a second. Let me go ahead and click change. All right. And now we click on the button that says old and new values. So the old value will be our levels of GPA. So in this case, when we're talking about pass or fail, we're actually going to be talking about a range of scores. So, for example, let, let's identify who would be considered in the fail category first. So what we would do is a range of values. So for the fail category, it would be the lowest grade through a particular value. And let's just arbitrarily choose as uh, our, our limit of fail. So if someone has a zero between this value, we consider them to have failed. So let's consider that to be one point. 75. So if someone had between 0 and 1.75, we would consider that to be a failure. Okay, and then we have to give the new value for the new variable we're creating, and so that would be a 0. Okay, and then we click Add. And then for the people that pass, be arranged through a value through the highest score, we would call that 1.76. We would give that a code of a 1, and then we add that. So anyone who had 0 between 1.75 would be considered to have failed the course. Anyone who had 1.76 or above would be considered to have passed the course. Okay, so what this will then now do is convert these numeric values into a category. So we go ahead and click Continue, and then we click OK. Now if we go and look at the data, we can see that we now have our numeric variables converted into a category. So the next thing we need to do, or the last thing we need to do, is then identify for, for ourselves, as well as for the SPSSS, um, what a 1 means and what a 0 means. So we go back to our variable view, and here's our, our val variable pass fail. And we go back to that values column, and we need to give it a value. So that code of zero, what does that actually mean? Well, that means a fail. Let me click add, and then what does the one mean? Turn the one, that would indicate a pass. We add that, and then we click OK. And so now as we go back to our data view, we can see now that a one is a pass and a zero is a fail. And so now we might be able to use this data as, as a categorical outcome and do nonparametric statistics on it. 
So to summarize, what we learned how to do here is, is look at categorical um, or nominal scale data that we want to organize, code, and analyze using non-parametric techniques. And we learned how to, how to kind of organize that data and then enter it into SPSS. So hopefully you learn from this technique and you can uh, have good luck using this in your own research.